989. Welcome to a 989 on Health Extra. These quick supplements should help ease any withdrawal symptoms you may experience while waiting for our next full episode. So, Mike, what's on today's agenda? Just a quick message before we get started today. As much fun as I've had, as much as I've learned doing 989 on Health, this podcast will be coming to an end before too much longer. Our final weekly episode will be number 100. So there's still some time if there's a question you've been meaning to ask us, but get those questions in while you can. Just check the show notes for the Contact Us link. We've received another great topic request from a listener. This week's question is, why does swallowing become more problematic as a person gets older? Issues with swallowing have an official name. It's called dysphagia. The dis is from Greek for difficulty or pain, and phasia, which is Greek again, this time for eating. Like a lot of these old terms, the official definition doesn't precisely capture the issue. There could be a lot of different reasons a person might have trouble eating, from a toothache to a cut on your tongue to difficulty swallowing. And it might be that you can swallow. The layperson's version of swallow, which is the stuff in your mouth, leaves your mouth and travels into the throat. It may be for you that departure isn't the problem. It's that you start to inhale your food more often as you age, something called aspiration. Getting food and drink into your lungs can lead to pneumonia and worse. It's a bad scene. Before we get into what makes swallowing increasingly difficult as we age, I want to review the swallowing process as it happens while working correctly. Swallowing is a surprisingly complicated process, something all of us do hundreds of times per day just to swallow saliva. Now, I did a weird experimental episode on swallowing back in episode 61. I had fun making it, but I don't think it worked well as an information delivery method. That's what happens when no one can tell you something is a bad idea. Anyway, if some of this sounds familiar, that's why. Part of the medical research I do comes from a textbook. Specifically important for today is the textbook Gould's Pathophysiology for the Health Professions, 5th edition. So what I'd like to do now is quote from the textbook and read you the section which breaks down all the steps the human body takes to swallow something. It's going to be somewhat technical, but in a way, I think that adds to the impact. All right, quote, When food is ready to be swallowed, the tongue pushes the bolus of food back to the pharyngeal wall, where receptors of the trigeminal and glossopharyngeal nerves relay the information to the swallowing center in the medulla. Because the reflex is activated at this point, deglutition becomes an involuntary activity. The swallowing center coordinates the actions required to move food or fluid into the stomach without aspiration into the lungs by means of cranial nerves 5, 9, 10, and 12 in the following steps. The soft palate is pulled upward. The vocal cords are approximated. The epiglottis covers the larynx. Respiration ceases. The bolus is seized by the constricted pharynx. As the bolus of food moves into the esophagus, distending the wall, peristalsis is initiated, pushing the food down the esophagus. The distal part of the esophagus passes through the hiatus in the diaphragm to join the stomach in the abdominal cavity. The lower esophageal sphincter relaxes in advance of the bolus, allowing it to drop into the stomach. End quote. That is extremely complicated. I'm sure that someone that doesn't have an advanced degree in internal anatomy is going to understand half of what that says. But just wanted to get across that swallowing is very complicated. So what are some of the reasons for dysphagia, especially as a person's getting older? Before I answer that, you know, I tend to assume that most things wrong with my body are my own fault. I'm overweight because I eat too much. My feet hurt because I'm overweight and I probably have the wrong shoes. I have muscle pain in my hands and arms from too much computer use. I get caffeine headaches when I've not had my coffee because I'm addicted. Since I naturally take the blame, a lot of reasons for dysphagia seem like common sense to me. There are a lot of reasons, many of which you personally can take action on. I'll talk about the actionable items first. You might have bad posture. This one older lady I know, God bless her, holds her body as if she's curled into the fetal position while she's sitting at the dinner table. She looks like a very sleepy Tyrannosaurus Rex. Not good for swallowing. Sit up straight. Posture is important. 
As a younger person, you might have been able to eat and laugh and talk and eat and never have a problem. But especially if you're having some trouble swallowing, stop the talking and focus on swallowing carefully. Also, as a younger person, you might have been able to manage huge bites, barely chewing and swallowing a large amount of food at one time. As a more mature individual, it may well be time to take smaller bites and chew them more thoroughly. Maybe it's time for less steak and more sweet potato. If you have dentures, you should make sure they're checked regularly by your dentist. Your mouth changes as you age, and an ill-fitting denture can result in problems eating and swallowing. One guy I know at work, he was complaining the other day that his dog got a hold of his 10-year-old dentures and damaged them. And the guy fixed them with some super glue. No, not good. Get some new dentures. One element that's hard to fight is something called sarcopenia, which is basically the degenerative loss of muscle mass, quality, and strength, which is associated with aging. You lose about 1% of your muscle per year after age 50. Now, some folks, like my dad, who's in his 70s now, do daily exercises to help fight off this loss of muscle, and that is hugely important for healthy aging. It turns out you can also do exercises for your mouth and throat. Oral and pharyngeal range of motion exercises, throat resistance exercises, bolus control exercises. The bolus is the ball of food in your mouth. And there are even different swallowing maneuvers that you can practice. As you can imagine, swallowing a bite of steak is different than swallowing a sip of tea. So all of these exercises and therapies are something to talk about with your doctor to get you to the proper specialist or therapist. Now, if you think back to all of the steps involved in swallowing that I listed just a few moments ago, it's clear that you don't have conscious control of most of those steps. And one problem that happens with age is that the precise timing of those steps becomes misaligned. So if the epiglottis doesn't cover the larynx precisely when it should, for example, that could cause a problem. There are actually many, many reasons you might have trouble swallowing as you age. And it probably won't surprise you to know there are high-tech tests and treatments, from ultrasound to electrical stimulation, a CT scan, even an x-ray of your chest. It turns out if you have too much air in your upper chest, you actually have to fight this air pressure to get your bolus swallowed. Or maybe you have macroglossia, which is an enlarged tongue which can build up slowly over time, you might not even realize it, but that also can make it more difficult to swallow. Surprisingly, most of the therapies you'll receive for dysphagia are delivered by a speech therapist. Me being an average Joe, I just thought speech therapists were for problems like stuttering. But no, they cover a lot of mouth and throat stuff that you never think about. Definitely talk to your primary care doctor if you're having trouble swallowing, and they can start you down the exciting road of referrals, tests, and treatments needed to help you with your swallowing issues. But don't put it off, as dysphagia can be life-threatening in some cases. As always, there are lots of useful links in the show notes. Be sure to check these out for more details. Thanks again to our great listeners for sending in suggestions. If you'd like to send in your own topic for consideration, head on over to level989.com slash contact and make it so. That's all for now. You can find links to read more about today's topics at level989.com. Why not take a moment to rate or review us in iTunes, or give us a mention on social media? We can't help everyone if they don't know we exist. Don't rely on us as an alternative to medical advice from a professional healthcare provider. For the full disclaimer, please see our website. Thanks for listening, and now, go health yourself. Go health yourself.